All right, how fun a draft was that? I mean, if you're a football lover and a football connoisseur, drafts just don't get much better than that. I mean, you look at the 2021 playoffs, those were a blast. Super Bowl, that was a blast. This offseason and the free agency, that was a blast. This is just following the long line of the best that the NFL can offer. First 10 picks, you know, teams took their picks. It was real fun. And then at pick 11, the Saints just blew it all up and everything started happening, changing. And it's just going to take a real while to break down this whole draft because there's been so much movement. And I, I really feel just on the face of it, a lot of teams helped themselves. There, was, there weren't too many moments where I said, ah, that team's losing. A lot of teams made some great moves. Good dig into it over the next couple of days. Still got day two, day three, and all that stuff. But I'm going to get into the AFC East right now. Obviously, I'm a Dolphins fan. That's where it all starts for me. Cover the Bills. Got lots of Bills fans that watch. So between the two of them, you know, I'm going to get into the AFC East. But there's just so much other stuff I want to get into. Just really crazy and exciting stuff. But as far as the AFC East goes, it's really a three-team race. But the Jets did everything humanly possible with what they had available in day one to close that gap. And I'm really, I mean, the Jets, I don't like them. But as a football fan and being fair to the fans of of the Jets, really excited about what they did. Now, I'm getting to the Bills first. You know, obviously the Dolphins, they got Tyree Kill. That's their draft so far, pretty much. That's their draft this year. It's Tyree Kill up until late tomorrow. So we're going to put them aside. But even if you're just a, a Finn fan, you should really pay attention to these other teams because, you you know, there's so much competition in the AFC East. Winning uh, in the AFC, winning the division is going to be essential. And it's not going to be easy, even if you're a huge believer the Dolphins are, are going to be awesome upon awesome. It's going to be very, very tough. And Bills fans, it's not going to be a cakewalk for you either, I don't think. But, but, Bills did exactly what I had done in podcasts. And what most Bills fans, you know, thought too. You got to bolster that secondary. Devontae Parker... Uh, went to the Patriots. He can be a dangerous threat. He's hurt the Bills on occasion. You got the Dolphins, obviously, with Waddle and Hill and Gusecki. You know, and Trey White could be out to like October. Really good cornerback. You know, you guys get great safeties. But still, that secondary is a little bit of an issue considering the firepower that's coming into the AFC and drafting uh, Kair Elam with the 23rd overall pick, traded up from the 25th to the 23rd um, with the Ravens, who traded for the 23rd spot and then traded back to the 20th. It's wild. But, you, you know, you, as you're a Bills fan, you know. Uh, only giving up a fourth, which wasn't bad. And uh, Kair Elam from Florida, 6'2", 192, physical traits, Press uh, coverage kind of guy, zone coverage, which you guys like to run. You needed him. It was like the fourth best, some people third or fourth best corner in a draft. Now, the thing that worries me for your Bills is KC traded with the Patriots and jumped in and grabbed Trent McDuffie. And McDuffie doesn't have the same physical skills that um, Elam has, but he's more refined. And his career's kind of trended up. I think he's real smart. He can play that zone coverage. And I think because he is more refined, maybe not the same ceiling that Elam has because Elam's got the physical gifts. But I think he might have helped you out quicker this season. And it's really crucial that you guys get off to a hot start this year. So I don't know if you trade it up and got the second corner that you wanted, or you traded up so nobody could take the corner you wanted. I'm going to be looking to hear from you Bills fans to tell me what you think. I'm glad you got a corner. You needed that big time. Some people were saying running back, which I thought was ridiculous. 
I thought maybe an offensive lineman if the cornerback wasn't there, if there had been a run in corners. But I like the move. I like the situation. You can still get a good lineman in that second round pick. I still think you're going to need to get another corner maybe with that third pick. But I like what you did. This kid is big. He had knee injury last year. And he kind of had his best year in 2019. 2020 went down a little bit in 2021 down. But overall, this kid's got great potential. I think if you can coach him up, he could end up being a very, very good pick for you. But the thing is how quickly is because his awareness and he's a little grabby, very physical, but a little grabby, and that can cost you early on. So it's going to be very interesting to see how quickly this kid can get up to snuff. Needed him no matter what. This was a must-need pick. It was either had to be uh, uh, McDuffie or Elam. So good pick. Got yourself in position. Day two is going to be a huge day for Buffalo Bills fans. That second round pick and third round pick got to be another two two winners. So a real good job. Like the pick. Uh, Pats, they traded out with the Chiefs from the 21st back to the 29th. They picked up a third and a fourth. Now they got a first, second. Well, they used their first. But they had a second, two-thirds, two-fourths, fifth, three-sixths, and the seventh. And, you know, a lot of teams, they're really high, obviously, on the blue-chip picks. But the Patriots, I mean, some people say they they can't draft. But how have you slice it? They're bringing plays into the system so they win. I mean, last year they surprised. They've been winning for a very long time. So they have a lot of the picks as what they want to keep their cap in check and in control. But their, the, the draft pick they made at 29 was strange. No pun intended. The guard's name was Cole Strange. I did a study on him for the Dolphins because I thought the Dolphins might get a chance to find him uh, in the third round. If he was picked anywhere from the second to go anywhere from the second to the third round. I thought maybe he'd fall to the third Pats were uber high on this guy. And he does. He has some great traits, some like real elite traits to play center, to play guard. They like that kind of guy. They're really still building that offensive line to build around Mac and get the running game going. They got rid of uh, Shaq Mason. So it makes sense in a way, but I don't know if they reached. I don't know if they reached this. It's going to be real, really interesting. Like I said, the study on the kid. I really liked the kid. Just didn't think he would go this high. And I don't think most people thought he'd go this high. So it'll be, it, this is going to be a really great moment for fans of the game to get an eye on Bill Belichick. They find some really good... I mean, they found Michael Onwenu in the sixth round. They found Shaq Matt Mason late. They know how to find their offensive lineman. They, they do a pretty good job with it. So this could be a steal or an overreach. It'll be interesting to see either way. But they did help that offensive line. They still got a lot of work to do. But with all these picks, they'll find guys, I think, to kind of fill holes. So it's gonna be, they, you're not going to be able to tell the story on them until later on. But the Jets, the Jets ain't competing. Jets are not going to beat the Dolphins or the, probably the Patriots or the Bills consistently and push themselves into the top of the AFC East or contention of the AFC East. Not this year. But if you're a Jets fan, or just you know, like I said, a fan of the game, and you're looking at it objectively, the Jets did everything possible with what they had to fill holes and to push this team forward so it might possibly contend. Now, Zach Wilson, whatever, he, he's going to be the key. But when you look at what they did, Sauce Gardner, who I thought was probably going to be the first corner taken off, he wasn't, uh, Stingley was, um... But Gardner was taken fourth by the Jets. And this guy's six foot three, 192, physical, press player, smart, confident. Just, just a really good kid, man. And he's his career's kind of gone up and up and up. Unbelievable pick. Great find for them. They have Swiss cheese on defense. But Reed over at the yellow corner spot is a good player. Pairing him with sauce. You really could set yourself up to have two solid corners or maybe more than that. And that's what the Jets needed, defense. I really, really like this pick. I'm very intrigued by the kid. I mean, six foot three corner, 192, and and he's pretty fast. Now, uh, Garrett Wilson, they picked the receiver 10th. 
and I was kind of not really high on the kid. I mean, I thought he was going to be good, but I like my receivers a little bit bigger. But I really should have thought better of it because I saw Chase, the way Chase performed, and he's only 5'11". So after he was picked, I went back and did some more research, watched some more highlights, did some... And the kid really popped out. I think his interview, when he got picked, really showed me maturity and intelligence. And then when I watched some of the highlights and watched, went back some of his film, this kid runs a 4'3'8". And even though he's only 5'11", I'm 5'8", so I shouldn't say only 5'11", but this kid just gets up there at high points plays and fights through traffic to make the catch, and he's an unbelievable route runner, and I really had to rethink my stance on it. I really like this kid. And pairing him with Sauce, I thought this was a really good draft for the Jets, but the Jets made another good move. They came back, Got Jermaine Johnson, the edge player slash linebacker, more like edge player, 26th in the first round. Uh, they had a chain. They traded a late second and a third and a fifth to move from that late second all the way to the first round, which I don't know. It, it felt like they traded with the Titans. It felt like that's, a, that's not a lot of ammo to move all the way up there and pick this kid up. This kid had... 18 tackles for loss, 12 sacks, 48 pressures. He runs a 4.58 at like 250 something, six foot five. This kid, I mean, they have really, really, they need an edge player. They need some edge players. Lawson's coming back from the injury, but you can't really depend on that. But if you can, that's you have two nice edge players. You got yourself your corner, and you got yourself a receiver to help uh, with Zach Wilson. And then you still got that early second and a bunch of other picks later on. This was a really good day for Jets fans. What it seems, what it seems, you know, we gotta let this play out. But what a good day for the Jets and Jets organization and the AFC East. You know, I, I'm a Dolphins fan, I always want my team to win. But the AFC East is next. I want the AFC East to, to represent, you know? And it looks like all four teams are really developing themselves to be competent and competitive. And the way the AFC is looking, man, with all these teams, they're going to need to be. So, to me, I would put the Jets as the number one team to have the best day uh, for day one of the 2022 draft, except for maybe the Ravens. Like what the Giants did. I like that they went to edge player first and found a really good tackle with a seventh overall. So it was a really good move by them. I, th I like the Giants too. Like really like what the Giants did. Eagles too, they made some good moves. But the Ravens getting Kyle Hamilton Hamilton at like 13th or 14th, 6'4", 220 pounds safety, who's a Mensa genius on top of that, to go with the Ravens with their awesome coaching, the way they develop defensive players. Man, I am looking forward to seeing what this kid do can, can do uh kid can do. And then Tyler Lindenbaum, center. They were saying he and that, you know, you look at this guy, he's a little small. But with Lamar and the way they like to run stuff, these two players are perfect players for the Ravens. And, I mean, Ravens do it right just about every season, like top-notch. They are, their front office, I say it every single year I cover a draft, they're just a phenomenal organization. So to me, Jets and the Ravens really had a phenomenal day. AFC East, Bills did their thing. There's not, they only had that one pick, small trip, not a big deal. Day two is going to be a big deal for them. And, Bills, uh, the Patriots, going to be day two as well. Dolphins, they need to make... Day two, I think, is going to be the make-or-break moment for the top three teams of the AFC East. I'm really looking forward to it. Really enjoyed this draft. So anyway, let me know what you think. I'm um, getting back into it. Really want to start doing lots and lots of videos. Just really enjoyed this draft. Just gave me so much momentum and excitement. So thanks for staying to the end. Please like, comment, subscribe. Comments mean the most because I really view this as a football forum where I learn and uh, where I share my thoughts. <sighs> this looks like it's going to be a good season, guys. Anyway, thanks for staying to the end. Please like, comment, subscribe. Comments, subscriptions, and likes, and all that stuff. Keep me in business. Keep my sponsors happy. So thanks for everything. Anyway, it's Curtis saying thank you for staying to the end. Catch you next time. Be well. See you tomorrow. Stop.
Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebread.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.